Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited to be here today um, talking about a pretty important topic that has been lighting up a lot of chats, a lot of um, Twitter threads, a lot of things. So I have joined with me today, AJ Reynolds. Um, AJ is a tax professional extraordinaire, NATP instructor, among many other things. Um, of course, he is also the star in a recently released book, but we will not mention that here. Um, and so AJ, thanks for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. I know everyone watching is really excited to, to hear what you have to say. Um, so to recap, we what are we talking about today? We're talking about the K2, K3 instructions. This has been a huge topic. Um, what is the biggest concern with these updated instructions? Oh, yeah. Well, good morning, Sam. So it's good to see you. Hey, uh, and good morning to everybody that's out there. Uh, if you were to look at the instructions, even if they're posted on the IRS's website as of right now, it will say, if you go to the front page, which I have them right here, it says, who must file? Now, even though it's been updated, but it hasn't been updated, it says the partnership need not complete the schedule if the partnership does not have items of international tax relevance or international activities. However, on January 18th, the IRS dumped the final instructions uh, to us, which haven't necessarily been updated. So if you go to irs.gov and you go into the instructions or you, you keyword search the instructions, that's what you will read. However, and I won't, I won't go into all the details, but on January 18th, they released some additional information, which is causing all the buzz. And that is, is not only, let's the Sam, let's say you and I own a laundromat in Iowa. And, um, and we, have, of course, have no international, no foreign activities because we just collect the money from the laundromat. However, uh, let's just use me. I have to file Form 1116 because my foreign tax credits, married filing joint, would be over 600 or single under 300. Suddenly, your and my little old partnership laundromat has to complete K2 and K3. That suddenly just erupted, and that's kind of why... Um, why we're here today because of um, this requirement that I think is going to produce the huge burden. But I will tell everybody, let's just kind of take a step back. I know everybody's kind of panicking and everybody's like freaking out, but we need to just take a step back and discuss a few things. So you got another question for me? I sure do. So what can um, a preparer do to help fulfill their requirements is the first question that, I've got for that, you. That is, <laughs> that's, that's a loaded question, but that's a good <laughs> one. So as I stated, January 18th, they come out and said, you know, even though, and, and that's, I think, throws everybody off because they would just think, well, we have a laundromat. Who cares what AJ or, you know, the, the partner does? It's not our concern, but it is. So what can we do or what should we do comes into play? And let, let's back up for a second. The K2 and K3 are an extension of, and I'm just going to talk about the partnership, but it's the same on an S-Corp. So if you remember on partnerships in box 16, if you had any, any international activity or an investment that produced foreign tax credit, it was in box 16 and it had about six or seven codes that you kind of shook your head about. So now they've developed a 19 pages of K2 and then 20 pages of K3 or vice versa to further expand on something that was in this tiny little box. So that in itself, the new forms are a burden, but the IRS says they're, they will provide clarity on issues, which they probably will if you had international uh, exposure or activity. But now, how do you know, if I prepare the return, if I'm Joe tax preparer, and Sam and AJ are the partners, and I don't do neither Sam or AJ's tax return, how do I know if Sam and AJ has a filing requirement for 1116? Well, now we're going to have to go to the main partner. And what if there's 20 partners? We'll have to go to the main partner, and we're going to have to say, hey, uh, we're going to need to find out if anybody out there has to file the 1116. And if so, we could have 100 partners, but if we have one partner, the partnership then has to file these forms. So, and I will tell you that the K-2 is an extension of information that's on the Schedule K, 
1065 or 1120S. And the K3 is an extension of what's on schedule K1. You know, some people, I know that, um, I think his name is Glenn Dance. He used to work for the chief counsel office. He kind of feels it's an overkill. A lot of people think it's an overkill of the information that um, that needs to be prepared. But um, we're going to have to reach out uh, to do that. And I will point out, um, it's not ready yet, but NATP is going to do an on-demand webinar it's going to be 50 minutes um, presented by me, but uh, that's neither here nor there. But it's going to provide a detail of what are we looking for, how to do it, and also how do you prepare the K2 and K3 in relation to if you have to file it. Now, we're not going to dive into if your partnership has like a 5471 corporate investment in it or has foreign activity. We're only going to concentrate on if one partner or you have to file it because a partner has to file the 1116. I will tell you that I just did one for a law firm that I represent. And so we're gonna present that and, and there'll be a lot of information in the 50 minutes, but it will be uh, it will be wonderful. And I, and I know everybody's here just like me, are busy going 100 miles an hour, drinking 85 cups of coffee and Mountain Dew to stay awake and uh, and try to smile while we're doing it. But thank you for joining today and also the on-demand webinar. It's going to be 50 minutes. I'll, I'll tell you exactly how to do the form, what boxes to complete. Um, so hopefully you just take 50 minutes out of your time. And what's cool, Sam, is I believe it's going to be on-demand, which then they can pull it up at 1030 or 1130 at night and uh you know it's and that way you can go to sleep afterwards because i'll definitely probably put you to sleep, <laughs> put you to sleep. So that was an extension of my wife always accuses me they just ask you what time now the not how the watch was made so i expanded a little bit too far <laughs> that's so, quite well, all right no it's good yeah. information definitely um next question for you aj um is there penalty relief from having to file the schedules yeah so last year the IRS came out because the K2 and K3 is an expansion on what used to be in box 16 and the 1065 and box 14 and the 1120S. There's a lot of stuff going on. You look at the forms and the instructions. If you look at the forms and instructions, it's probably 60 or 70 pages. It will make your head spin. So that's why I say you got to take a step back and just look at it from the basic perspective. But yes, the IRS notice 2021-39 provides penalty relief, but it will also go into more detail in the on-demand webinar, but there is penalty relief available, but it's only if it's reasonable cause and not willful neglect. Now, what does that all that mean? It means did Joe prepare that prepares the laundromat for Sam and I, did he ask the necessary question to ensure AJ or Sam didn't have 1116 filing requirements. And because of that, um, there's some extra work that we have to do. Or I will tell you, Sam, you can just say, I don't care. Uh, just bear with me before I say that. I don't care what the other partners do. I'm just going to complete K2 and K3 and be done with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and just make it part of it. And that way you don't have to care. And, and another thing, um that uh natp is going to provide as part of the on-demand webinar is 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 a, an internal control checklist even if, i don't care if you, i'm all by myself i just have an assistant but you know like an internal control document to make sure or if you have a reviewer or a larger staff we're going to provide uh, i've already developed it um, uh, we're going to provide a an internal checklist and then I think we're going to produce something that we can give to the main partner to give out to the partners to sign off on it. So anyway, we'll, nice. we'll get into that. Um, That'll be really valuable for yeah, yeah. anyone dealing yeah, with this. Sure. Absolutely. Um, last question for you, AJ, before we kind of wrap up, and it looks like we have a few questions coming in on the um, comments on this video. But before we get to those, um, are there any other helpful tips you have for tax pros who are dealing with this right now? Right. And we'll go back to the internal control document that you do in your office. Also to get to send out an email. I guess you'd prefer an email to send out that um, uh, you should know. You go to the main partner and say, can I have all the partners email addresses? And we send out and they have to electronically sign that they don't have a filing requirement. 
Uh, and there, and there's, uh, there's a little, there's a lot of caveats there. But an, another thing to consider is the K2 and K3 are available, but a lot of softwares do not have them uploaded into the program. And here's the kicker, Sam. The 1065, 11, the 1065 K2 and K3 will not be available for e-filing until I believe the last part of March. Well, what's wrong with that? The tax returns due on March 15th, so you might need to extend. Here's another kicker. The 1120S is not due to be available for e-file until uh, summer, first part of summer. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't want to be in the office then. No, <laughs> we work year round anymore. But um, so what else can you do? What what I've done, I mean, I just personally speak for myself, is, is the K2 and K3 I just produced because I have partners. And it's, it's going to be easy. Let me step back. It's going to be easy when I do all the partners tax returns because I'm going to know if they have a K2 or K, or I mean, 11, 16. But um, if they don't know, they're going to have to sign off on it. But also there's, there's other things that we can do is you can just ignore everything and file it. What about um, also stating instead of filing the 11, 16, maybe you have the partner file as a schedule A as a deduction if they itemize because a foreign tax credit usually goes beyond the SALT limitation. So mm -hmm. that could be an option. Um, there's a lot of things to consider because also one other thing is you also have to look if you have a, let's say, Sam, we have a third partner that's mm -hmm. a partnership that has 100 partners. They're our third partner. You have to reach out to the 100 partners in the partnership that's invested with us to see if they have any filing requirements. What about this? What if, Sam, you didn't have a filing requirement, but then you inherited money from a great uncle you didn't know, and it has foreign investments, and you have to file the 1116, but when you signed off on the form, you didn't know it. But at least, ladies and gentlemen, we had an internal control of signing off all of these documents. So there's a lot to take in in this. And then, like I said, on the on-demand webinar, we'll go into what sections that we have to prepare uh, we'll provide an in internal control, prepare staff partner approval checklist, and and um, uh, a document of, of essentially sending out to the partners for them to sign that they do not have any 1116 requirements. Uh, I just have sent out a basic email because I know I, I represent some people that I don't do the returns for, but I know the preparers because I kick out the 11 to the K1. So I've already reached out to them and say, hey, does Harry or Sally have a requirement? And they wrote back, said yes, no, or whatever. But I'll end with this is to even give you more of a headache. What if um, Sam, um, uh, you know, let's just use me, I'm married and I'm, let's say, a partner, but I don't file 1116, but my wife, who's a nurse, but let's say she's a lawyer and she has a K-1 that comes in from the, a national law firm with foreign tax credits. Well, it says right in the instructions, a partner, but the wife. So it's the partner who's married by default because they have to file 1116. Is that question? Yes. There's a lot of unanswered questions and unusual circumstances. So I'll dive into this deeper. I saw a question of when the on-demand webinar is mm -hmm. going to be available. Just like you guys, I'm in tax season two. So I'm going to probably, uh, hopefully, uh, I, I guess I'll put myself on the spot. I hopefully will write it over the weekend. Now I'm going to have to. Um, <laughs> and uh, I ask for the NHTP and they can uh, correct all my mistakes in it. And then we'll get it, we'll get it out there. <laughs> yeah, we'll get it up as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Hopefully, um, I will get it done within within a week. And then two <laughs> things. Um, I just want to get it to them and then pass the buck on to you guys. But Absolutely. Uh, I, um, again, so. Adrian, we do have a few questions actually coming in. I know we talked earlier um, if you would, are willing and slash have time to answer them. Um, the first one is if my sub S has one shareholder and he dabbles in virtual currency, um, if his di digital wallet is held out of country, could that generate the need for 1116? Um, and also the K1, K2 and K3. Nice, nice question. How am I, <laughs> how am I supposed to know? No, I, I do. No, I do. Um, so thank you for the question. I would say no, because you make an excellent point because, you know, the virtual currency that's held, we're not doing virtual currency conversation, but 
just because you have to file a FinCEN report, which is uh, foreign accounts over $10,000. Remember, virtual currency is considered property, not currency. But um, I, no, I, the answer to the short answer to the question is no, it would not produce you to file because a virtual currency, unless it's taxed by a foreign country and it produces foreign tax credits over the limit, but just filing the FinCEN itself does not then generate a requirement for that. Two different, two different baskets. Okay. So. Um, another question from Steve. Um, if the business has foreign in, oh, no foreign involvement, excuse me, is there any harm in just filing K2, K3 to play it safe? Steve, I, I, I think I want to be wherever that picture is from because uh, <laughs> yeah. in Iowa, we don't have, uh, well, we don't have palm trees, but uh, we don't have that nice <laughs> weather. But uh, um, no, uh, th that's one of the things that uh, Sam and I were discussing earlier is heck with sending out those letters, join the on-demand webinar, and uh, I'm going to teach you how to, how to complete the form. I hope to teach you. And then heck with it, just fill it out and... And, and give it. And there's no problem with that. Absolutely. The only problem, Steve, is is if you can uh, wait for the e-file. But as far as my software is concerned, and I will tell you, oh, I have my notes here. Um, most, uh, I, I can't mention what I use, but it will allow an attachment. So you can attach it as a PDF and it will allow up to 50 partners. Um, and I don't think I represent I might have 30, but I don't represent anything about 50. So I'll be able to attach it and we just file it. Great, great point, Steve. All right, Sam, go ahead. No, you're great. Um, we'll take, we've got a couple more coming in, but we'll take one more just because I know everyone's crunched for time. Um, from Phyllis, does this also apply to someone who has an international mutual fund that pays a minor amount of foreign tax? Again, Phyllis, look at these nice pictures of the background. All right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, if 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 um, if Sam and I have the lawn mat, um, and we both own Nestle stock, which is you know who doesn't like Nestle, <laughs> um, and Nate, you pay foreign tax, and let's say um, uh, let's say Sam and I are both single, and we produce under three hundred dollars, and we have no filing requirement. The key, ladies and gentlemen, is if we have no filing requirement at eleven sixteen. And then we're, we're golden. But we have to ensure that they do, do not have the filing requirements by getting signed statements, signed disclosures, internal review of, of the documents. And, and I also want to say, Sam, be, before we go, is, is thank you so much for having me. I, and I'm glad people took the 10, 15, where well, we go 20 minutes of, of your time, which is valuable. But this is a pretty important thing. And as I said at the beginning, and I'm going to say something that Sam's going to roll her eyes, but one, take a breath. And my grand, my grandfather always told me, and I told my kids this, and you can roll your eyes, take the energy that you're complaining about it and just figure out how to do it and get it done. And I know you're rolling your eyes and thank God we're not in person so you can throw things at me. <laughs> but, it, but it rings true. I, I, I was, And I complain about things. Trust me, you can ask my wife. And I always hear my grandfather in my back of my head, quit complaining about it, son, and just go do it. So <laughs> I, that's, that's what the on-demand webinar is going to be. So I'll shut up. Sam's got a lot of <laughs> today. Good. So. Well, it was just a delight to talk to you as always, AJ. Um, we really look forward to getting your webinar out there and ready to go as soon as possible. I know this is a huge topic for a lot of people. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, we hope it was a good use of your time. Reminder, again, there will be an on-band webinar um, coming soon. Uh, we'll make an announcement in our Tax Pro Weekly newsletter as well as other places. Um, and AJ will be instructing that. So you are in good hands for whoever is going to attend. Um, thanks again, AJ. And we are going to call it a day. So we'll see you all later. All right. Bye, everyone. I'm out of here. Thanks, Sam. Have a great Thank day. You. you too. Bye.